Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got plenty of Power BI updates, plus some community items. It's gonna be awesome. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dive in. Marco Russo posted a video slash item out on SQLBI.com, and the topic is how do you find out why your Power BI report is slow? He's actually had this talk a couple times across, and this was posted as a video on SQLBI.com a while back, but this is an updated version, and what I like about it is that it includes the performance analyzer inside of Power BI Desktop. So you can take a look at how you can start with that, and then move your way on down to figure out how to optimize your DAX and how to use some tools such as DAX Studio and other items to improve the performance of your report. I love this topic. Even if you think that you're pretty proficient with this type of troubleshooting and you know everything that you need to do, I definitely recommend just checking it out again. Stuff like this, I try to just refresh myself every once in a while, just to make sure I'm staying on top of the latest and greatest and just you know brushing off the dust off the old cobwebs. Phil Seamark's been doing some blog posts out on dax.tips. He's got a couple great items out there. Be sure to check that out. The one this week that he did was talking about how to improve some performance with direct query. This actually stems from something that Phil and I were working on, and this is something that I would definitely recommend you check out if you're using direct query. When you use direct query, there's a lot of ins and outs and caveats and things you need to pay attention to. The Power BI documentation actually has some great general advice of things to be aware of or things to avoid. And one of the things he calls out in this blog post is the use of bi-directional relationships. This is something that you should definitely avoid with direct query. The documentation guidance actually calls that out as well. And he goes through and shows you why this is important when using direct query and why you should avoid bi-directional relationships. This holds true for both analysis services and Power BI, so they're both. it's relevant for both. And if you do find that you do need it, check out the DAX function cross filter as a way to be targeted from a measure perspective and avoid enabling bi-directional across the board. Links as always down in the description below, along with all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so be sure to check it out. The new filter pane experience is now generally available. This is something that I actually really love. You can do so many cool things with the new filter pane experience and they keep updating it to be even better. This is new as of the July Power BI desktop. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So make sure you update to the latest version, but there are things to be aware of with the new filter experience. And this blog post walks through how you can take advantage of all of the items inside of it. The new filter pane experience has been out for a little while as a preview feature. And I actually encountered some folks where they didn't even know about it because they don't necessarily turn on preview features or don't even know the preview features are there. And so now with the July release of Power BI Desktop, the new filter experience is the filter experience. So everyone will see it. It's great to go through this blog post to just refresh your understanding of it. If you've used it before and or if you're new to it, it'll walk you through how to use it. We got the June 2019 feature summary roll up for both the Power BI service, mobile app and gateway. And this really encompasses a lot of the stuff coming out of the Microsoft Business Application Summit. There were a couple of preview items that were inside of this. So we got shared and certified data sets. We got bring your own key, which is important from a premium side, as well as just, you know, certification and security compliance from organization standpoint. We also got a few generally available items or GA. So this included the Power BI template apps as well as paginated reports in Power BI Premium. The other big thing that was in here is that the viewer role is now available for the new Power BI app workspace experience. So that's very exciting. Definitely check that out. And there were updates from a roadmap perspective. So check that out at the bottom of the blog post. Again, links down in the description below. All right, we got to the July 2019 update for Power BI Desktop, yay! As always, there were some very cool items inside of this release of Power BI Desktop. The biggest thing that I saw get the most buzz is that we can now use icons from a conditional formatting perspective. You can do a lot of stuff with this. 
Amanda walks through in the blog post how to actually take advantage of this. I've also got some links down in the bonus section in the description below, one from Matt Allington over at Accelerator BI, and also another from Mike Carlo over at Power BI Tips. Both of them show you a few different things to use with these icon sets, so definitely check those out. They also have some different theme files that you can download to add new icons into the listing. So that's available for you as well. I already mentioned the new filter experience is generally available. There was also an update to the key influencer visual where you can actually show counts now. So this is pretty cool. Another big item of general availability or GA announcement was the use of aggregations. So aggregations are now generally available. That also means they include support for row level security, which is huge. Kudos to the Power BI team for getting that out. This is a great feature that you can take advantage of and it's available for both pro users and premium users. So. The other item I'll call out is a new preview connector that's available. This is for Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 or ADLS. This connector has been asked for by a ton of people and the preview connector is now available in the July release. So definitely check that out. Lots of great updates for the July 2019 Power BI Desktop update. Make sure you check out the blog post, links down below, read up on all the new features and also make sure you're updated to the latest version. I recommend using the Microsoft Store if you're on Windows 10, it will keep you up to date with the latest and greatest. I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. I wanna know, let's continue the conversation down in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.